Um, hello everybody, my name is Adam Bromberg. Um, I'm very happy to have been asked by Michael and the team at Mac to talk about some books that, um, that are dear to me, that I care about. I'm going to start with um, this one, uh, Cock, uh, which I want to talk about not because it's the best book I've got on my bookshelf, but because I care about it deeply. It was the first book made by my publisher, Gigi Giannuzzi, who, um, who was a very close friend and without whom I wouldn't have started doing what I do. And, um, and uh, Gigi died a few years ago, um, but I am eternally grateful to him for, I think, um, having trust in me. And then I'm going to talk about a book uh, that is my favorite book. Um, some of you might know it, most don't. Male Fantasies, this is actually volume two, it's a two volume book, by Klaus de... Hello, uh, Paquet! Paquet! The door, hang on one sec. They gon' get punished. They gon' get punished. Male Fantasies is... Bitches, you just play the... It's um, a remarkable book, and uh, I think the, the the title is a bit deceptive. Bitches, I got a honey. Bitches, I got a honey. Bitches, I got a honey. It's a um, Cantonese English publication that um, bilingually speaks about the deity she invented, Miss, Ruth, Miss Ruthless. And um, similar to the other publication, you see the virality of the image, how it slides through digital and physical spaces, and um, how she wishes this Miss Ruthless to reunite the 
Chinese diasporic communities um, and um, kind of in collaboration with 10 other artists writing and showing works in Cantonese and English that um, very playfully look at how the, the feminine is constructed um, throughout the abundance of images that we are having in virtual and physical spaces and I think um, some of the books that kind of are haunting me are um, much more older than this one I showed before so um, I have this uh, book with me called Shipriya the Ship Tarot that is um, edited in 2014 by Alfred Alipi and actually just showing like very classic colonial imagery um, from the Italian missions going to colonize Albania which is something that um, is quite well known in the relation to photography and the building of the nation states or the conquering of other nation states but actually the image that I really wanted to show you guys um, which always keeps hunting me somewhere hidden in here, yeah, it's here it's um, one of the few not staged studio works in there and in contrary to um, all these things here that are very beautifully acting as if they construct reality this one um, shows this veiled Catholic woman in front of the Hungarian army taking over Albania and um, it comes haunting me whenever I think about the 20th century in Albania because of the aperture having erase their faces, so you see these constructions of um, colonial buildings, the mosque in the back and then this ghostly woman and um, actually this over here, which is a book I would have loved to uh, see in my photographic education, but the West only likes to speak about the West, however um, this is actually published by Steidl and a really cute um, overview of all the self-portraits, Samuel Fossil, who is kind of canonized as one of the three most important West African studio photographers, is on multiple pages since the 70s, um, staging himself in the studio in uh, various um, ridiculous and uh, lovely um, poses crossing racial boundaries, genders, influences of power and the book is edited by the great Okri and Zebor and the um, beautiful thing um, that um, kind of fascinated me is an interview where Fosso was uh, speaking with Zebor in the beginning of the book um, on how he called his first photo studio in Bangui um, the nation and um, even though um, the nation in itself is a fucked up concept um, it was interesting to see that it was the first photo studio that was not by a French colonialist in town um, got the name of the nation because also for Fossil having this tool of photography was crucial to building the nation so um, Whereas the one book is um, the nation that is kind of coming from up front. This is the nation that is being speculated in a studio where someone is using this kind of um, ethnographic tool um, to do the, the counter of uh, what it was expected to do. And then... I have actually, this one is really, really nice because uh, on the one hand it is not a photo book um, and on the other hand it has so much relation to the photographic. It's a catalogue from Lunette Yadumboakie and she um, is one of the masters of the last decade of um, portrait painting and um, many of the works are really mesmerizingly beautiful in gesture, in shade. Uh, and in the, the poetics of portraiture that they bring. But um, what um, I think is so beautiful is that it um, 
you think that these are actual figures and she's sometimes using found footage and photography but it's all pictures so um, I really like this relation to um, the memory and looking at diverse imagery but then constructing um, pictures, moments, pictures, gestures, pictures, shapes, pictures, shapes um, and it's actually something, I think one of the books here, yeah is dealing um, in a similar way with the archive. So instead of um, thinking that photography could be a neutral tool, this is a book by Armando Lulay. Um, it's called the Albanian Trilogy, and actually most of the photographs you see in here are um, screenshots of video works and found footage. And he's using actual histories from the uh, time of the Albanian dictatorship and the propagandist material of Enver Hocan and then he's intertwining these with um, speculative stories uh, so for example you see um, this pseudo-scientific imagery here of, um, of Wales um, and there's this um, urban myth of um, the paranoid dictatorship in Albania waiting for an enemy to come through and always thinking that there is an American um, boat waiting in the shores and then realizing there's actually, it's not a military boat, but it's a whale. Um, and then putting this whale, who could have been the enemy, but actually was just um, uh, part of the animal kingdom uh, into the propaganda ministry and um, using all these speculations to, to look at um, how our reality is very speculative and constructed in itself and um, that's also something that is very crucial for um, the artist collective that published these two publications here. They're called Ferras Publishing House and um, this one is a really sweet one because it's a, a book about books and a book about libraries. It's called When the Library Was Stolen on the Private Archive of the Abdal Rahman Munif. And Abdal Rahman Munif um, was a very important Syrian novelist and uh, although the three people um, of the publishing house uh, were born and raised in Syria, they met in Berlin at a time where um, Syria was in war, and in that war uh, in 2015, the library of Abdel Rahman Munif was uh, burglarized. Uh, and so um, they asked his wife to uh, photograph this library, and um, on I think um, many exchanges, they made like 450 photographs of this library. It's a very um, meditative thing to look at because it uh, speaks about the relation between um, the photograph and the archive and how you can catalogue and try to um, grasp reality but then also because of these um, photographs of something they could not access because it was burglarized in a war situation, they could not go back to um, where they uh, would want to research. Um, they exhibited these images first and then they um, used them as a pattern to speak about um, Arab publishing practices in the 60s and see what are the histories that actually are lying behind what we see on the surface of this library and um, which was something that led to um, the publication of this photo novel. It's called Borrowed Faces and um, it's a photo novel on publishing culture and uh, already the title makes me um, want to marry all of them. It's called An Exciting Adventure with Hala Haddad Afat Samra Huda al -Vadin, and has three colored posters inside and um, there's really, really beautiful imagery of Beirut during the Cold War and the three babes from the Ferras Publishing Collective um, embody three um, female Arab writers that in the time of the Cold War came to Beirut um, to um, write for certain publishing houses and really beautifully and funnily speaks about um, how politics and publishing culture got really intertwined in the Levant area but how also personal stories are um, 
embodied in these political histories and many of the images that you see inside the book are actually um, gifted by the Lebanese tourism ministry. Uh, so you have these super pittoresque images of Beirut in the 50s and then you have this um, ridiculous but very enriching um, photo publishing love story on top of it. And I think the last book that I am going to speak about before I shut up like this bitch on the right <laughs> is um, called uh, Welcome Today and it also is speaking in um, relation to the archive. So um, my dear friend Lebohan Tlali went um, to write an email to a Dutch photographer who was um, documenting his hometown. Welcome is a mining town one hour in front of Joburg and um, I think um, Lebo himself had a photographic education but kind of removed himself um, from the field after not being too excited about how photography um, is being practiced. But then he stumbled upon this work um, from uh, Art van Denderen who um, in the last um, breaths and residue of uh, apartheid photographed this mining town and came as a white Dutchman to welcome to um, give an overview of how things are and um, they revisited this whole overview 30 years later to look at um, what is what is happening to this archive, how is this archive living on, what is um, happening to the people that live in the residue of apartheid, how did structures change or not change and um, what did we actually do at that time and I think that's what is so interesting to me is also um, this rare moment when someone who's working as a as a journalist for a really long time who never got into the uh, the moment of someone actually who was your subject or not this person per se but who was like in, in what is considered being your subjects is coming through and saying hey actually I am a human being let's look at this what you did 30 years ago together and revisit um, and um, tell the stories of the people that are around what is being gazed at um, 30 years ago. So thank you so much. By the way, I'm Anna Engstein and um, it's nice to show you some of the works that are really dear to me. I hope you have a fantastic end of a fucked up year and uh, we're going to leave this to where it belongs. Bye! Fuck this shit, you're messing with us. Fuck this shit, you're messing with us.